Hi, and welcome to this tutorial on how to set up your development environment for Django Ledger. If you are a developer or if you would like to start writing code to integrate your application with Django Ledger, this is the video for you. If you haven't, go ahead and check out this video on how to get started with Django Ledger so everything is ready to go to start developing financially driven applications. On this tutorial, we're going to be setting up a development environment using Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks is an interactive development environment that runs in a browser. It comes already configured in the Django Ledger starter template that we just discussed in the previous video. If you haven't, go to miguelsanda.com slash get started to get your free get started guide on Django Ledger, where I'm going to be covering all the basic concepts behind the application to help you hit the ground running. Go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this one. And now let's get started. All right, depending on where you downloaded your Django Ledger started template files based on the previous video, we're gonna go ahead and CD into that directory right now. Okay, now the next thing that we're gonna be doing is installing the development dependencies that are already configured within the Django Ledger started template. To do that, we do pip env install. Now we do dash dash dev. This command will install all the additional dependencies we need to run our interactive Jupyter Notebook server in our machine. Now let's go ahead and activate our environment by typing pip env shell. And now let's run our Jupyter lab command to launch our development server. All right, so if everything is run correctly, we should now see a browser window pop up with our development environment ready to go. What we have here is our project files and within the Django Ledger starter folder, we see the quick start notebook right here. So let's go ahead and open that up. Now this quick start notebook has all the basic imports we need to start developing any financially driven application with Django Ledger. To run code, all we do is select the cell and hit shift enter and let's run that cell. Now let's disregard that warning because that warning is related to pandas, which is uh, a data analysis library, which we're going to be using to visualize our data much better in this development environment. We just run that again. All right. With this boilerplate code, what we can do is start writing some code with the backend of Django Ledger. Go ahead and hide this increase the font size a little bit. And if you followed the previous tutorial, by now you should have an already populated entity in your database and a user, which is the administrator of that entity. All right, to get started, let's go ahead and pull that entity model we just created in our previous tutorial. First thing that we're gonna do is get our user model. Okay, now let's go ahead and pull our, the user that we just created in our previous tutorial. We call it, call it the CEO user. And we're gonna be the user model, objects, get, and the username will depend on the user and you use to create your user. For me, it was that. All right, now let's pull a an entity query set to start working with. We do entity model query set equals the entity model, then the objects, then for user. And this method is going to pull all the entities that this user owns or manages.
Okay. Now we can see that we have pulled a list of entities that this user manages. In this particular case, it's just one entity, the one we just created. And here we're ready to go to start writing financially driven applications with this entity model. On the Django Ledger main repository, you can go to github.com slash arobalytics. And the link is going to be in the description below. Go to Django Ledger and go to notebooks. You will find the quick start notebook right here. And this notebook has a lot of examples to how to deal with entities, accounts, charts of accounts, etc. How to commit transactions how to create your own libraries. And I'm gonna be putting together some videos where we're going to be deep diving in each one of the sections related to this notebook. For now, you can go ahead and check this information. If you have any questions or any comments, please go ahead and put those in the, in the box below. And I'll see you on the next one. See ya.